In today's podcast, I look at the background to the death of Admiral John Benbow in 1702 and why it was celebrated in songs that are still sung today. I'll sing samples of the songs and end on a full performance. Oh, we sailed to Virginia and thence to Fayol, where we watered our ship in and then we weighed all, full in view of the sea boys. Seven sails we did espy, oh, we mannered our capstan and weighed speedily. Oh, the first we came up with was a brigantine sloop, and we asked if the others were as big as they looked, but turning to windward, as near as we could lie. We found there were ten men of war cruising by. John Bembo was born in Shrewsbury. His first period as a member of the Royal Navy ended in a court-martial after he made critical remarks about his commanding officer. He was determined to continue his life at sea, so he bought a merchant vessel, and when in 1685 the vessel was attacked by pirates off Cadiz, he successfully repulsed the attack killing 13 of the pirates. He rejoined the Royal Navy in 1689 and was made captain of the Britannia and was quickly promoted to Admiral. He had two periods serving in the West Indies, first in 1691 and secondly in 1701 in command of a squadron of 10 ships of the 3rd and 4th rate. In May 1702, England was pulled into the European wars of the Spanish succession, which lasted from 1701 to 1714, which effectively allied England to the Dutch against the French in an argument about who should succeed as the Spanish king. In August 1702, news was reported that a French fleet under Rear Admiral de Casse, consisting of ten ships, a large Dutch ship, and a collection of smaller vessels carrying troops and supplies had been sighted off Santa Marta in the West Indies. Benbow set off from Jamaica with a fleet of seven ships. The flagship was the Breda. On the 19th of August, the French fleet was engaged in action and a running fight took place over the next five days. Benbow's intention was to cripple the leading ships and then pick off the smaller vessels. Oh, we drew up our squadron in a very nice line. And boldly we fought them for full four hours' time, but the day being spent, boys, and the night coming on, we let them alone till the very next morn. On the first day, the 19th of August, four of his fleet entered action, the Falmouth against the Dutch ship and the Windsor and Defiance against two of the other larger ships. The Defiance and Windsor soon broke off action, refusing to engage any further. It was left to the flagship Breda, supported by Ruby and Falmouth, to engage the enemy. On the next day, the 20th of August, Bembo continued his action with only the Ruby as support. The other ships had drifted back five miles astern. The Falmouth had sustained damage to her steering tackle. There was only sporadic cannon fire as the French tried to continue the way, with the Breda and the Ruby in close pursuit. This pursuit lasted a further three days, without any chance of engagement to battle. On the fifth day, the 24th of August, a change in the wind enabled Bembo's ship Breda to engage the rearmost French ship. The very next morning the engagement proved hot. Brave Admiral Benbo received a chain shot. And when he was wounded, to his men he did say, Take me up in your arm, boys, and carry me away. Oh, the guns they did rattle, and the bullets did fly, But Admiral Benbow for help would not cry, Take me down to the cockpit. There is ease for my smarts. If my merry men see me, it will sure break their hearts. 
Admiral Benbow received wounds to his face and arms and had his right leg smashed by chain shot. After a short spell below decks, he was brought upon deck seated in a cradle to enable him to sit upright. This action was continued until his ship was too damaged to continue. The opponent's ship was damaged beyond repair. At this point, other ships of the French fleet came to aid their fallen comrade and fired on the Breda and shattered her main topsail and caused severe damage. The Windsor, Pendennis, Greenwich and Defiance turned and retreated despite orders from Benbo to engage the enemy. Benbo called his captains on board for a conference with the idea to continue action against the French fleet, but they refused, stating the French were too strong and that further action was futile. Benbow was forced to return to his base. On returning to Kingston in Jamaica, he brought a charge of cowardice against the four captains who had refused to engage the enemy. A court-martial was convened on the 16th of October and Captains Walton and Vincent were exonerated. Captain Hudson died before the trial. Captain Constable was cashiered and Captains Kirkby and Wade were sentenced to be shot. They were returned to Plymouth in Irons and executed in Plymouth Harbour on board the Bristol on the 16th of April 1703. Meanwhile, John Bembo died of his wounds and fever in November 1702. The very next morning by the break of the day They hoisted the topsails and so bore away We bore to Port Royal where the people flock much to see Admiral Benbow carried to Kingston Church. Come all you brave fellows wherever you've been, let's drink to the health of our king and our queen, and another good health to the girls that we know. And a third in remembrance of brave Admiral Benbow. There are two songs that celebrate Admiral Benbow's bravery, and they are both still in current circulation at shanty festivals and in folk clubs, and there are variations on text and tune in each. Both versions were printed in 1858 in William Chappell's collection, The Popular Music of Olden Times. First of all, I'll look at the death of Admiral Benbow. The earliest printing that I can find was in 1783, in Fielding's Vocal Enchantress. This has the strange opening lines of, We sailed from Virginia then to New York, where we watered our shipping and so weighed for cork. It's clearly written by someone who was neither a sailor nor knew the actual story of Benbow. This set of words was used in the broadside printings of the song. The version printed in Chapel's popular music of olden times has the more familiar We Sail From Virginia and Then to Fayol. And here again, the locations do not make any sense. The Virginia Cape is near to Chesapeake, north of New York, and Fayol is in the Azores. It is probable that the writer was confusing Benbow's battle with the later battle. The version in Chapel's collection has remained fairly consistent in all of the collective versions. This is probably because the song was regularly reprinted on song sheets into the 20th century. It was later published in the National Songbook and its revised editions, used in schools and front parlours throughout the first half of the 20th century. The other song is Admiral Bembo. According to William Chappell, it's also known as the Brother Tars song because he rose from being a common sailor to the rank of Admiral. The tune and its variants have been used for other songs such as Captain Kidd and Jack Hall. I'll end this podcast with a full version of Admiral Bembo. Come all you sailors bold, land an ear, land an ear. Come all you sailors bold, land an ear. It's of our Admiral's fate, Ray Bembo called by name. He fought all on the main, you shall hear, you shall hear. Grey Bembo, he set sail, far to fight, far to fight. Grey Bembo, he set sail, far to fight. Grey Bembo, he set sail, with a fine and pleasant gale. But his captains, they turned tail, in a fright, in a fright. 
Says Kirby unto Wade, I will run, I will run, says Kirby unto Wade, I will run. I value not disgrace, nor the losing of my place. My enemies I'll not face, with a gun, with a gun. Twas the ruby and Benbow, fought the French, fought the French. Twas ruby and Benbow, fought the French. And there was ten in all, poor souls, they fought them all. They valued them not at all, nor the noise, nor the noise. It was our admiral's lot, with chain shot, with chain shot. It was our admiral's lot, with chain shot. Our admiral lost his legs, and to his men he begs. Fight on me, boys, he says, tis my lot. "'Tis my lot. "'While the surgeon dressed his wounds, "'This he said, this he said, "'while the surgeon dressed his wounds, "'this he said, "'Let my cradle now in haste "'on the quarter-deck be placed, "'that my enemies I might face, "'till I'm dead, till I'm dead.' "'And there Bow Bembo lay, "'crying out, Crying out, and the bow bambo lay, crying out. Oh, let us tack once more, we'll drive them to the shore, as our fathers did before, long ago, long ago.